Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh, and in this video, we'll look at the implementation of linear and quadratic discriminant analysis. And in previous four videos, we looked at the in intuition behind the Bayes decision theory. And uh, in this video, we'll look at some of the equations that we have seen previously uh, and that are used in the cyclotron docs. So and this is a familiar equation that we have seen in past four videos, which is the Bayes rule. So briefly, we have the posterior probability, which is equal to the likelihood times the prior divided by evidence. And the prior here is the existing prior knowledge about uh, a particular item for example in the previous uh, videos we looked at the food processing plant example where we were uh, discussing about taking pictures of the vegetables on the conveyor belt so if the prior knowledge in that case would could be uh, knowing that uh, what type of vegetables were put into the hopper uh, so that we could use that in the model to update it so that the model is more accurate uh, another example could be if you are planning to go on a vacation uh, and uh, if you want to know the weather so the prior knowledge in that case could be what was the weather like at that location last year so that could be a prior knowledge then we have the evidence which is the normalizing term which is given here what this does is it brings the values for this product in the numerator within a range of 0 to 1 and so the posterior probabilities would be in 0 to 1 range in the previous videos we uh, the y was uh, written as omega so this is notation from the scikit-learn doc so that's a change here and here we have all our capital P's in the previous video we were very specific and we had the probability mass function so capital P for the prior and posterior and then for likelihood and the evidence term we had a small p which was the probability density function so here we'll go with what's in the docs for scikit-learn and uh, then uh, below we have the equation for multivariate Gaussian distribution and so here uh, you can see that the sigma then is a covariance matrix and again these would be matrices uh, uh, right here so for linear discriminant analysis uh, this was the equation that we discussed in the previous video where uh what we are trying to maximize is the log posterior uh, posterior probability and that here we are using the mahalanobius distance which is given by this term right here and the special specialty of this distance is that it takes into account the variation in the data data set so that's why this covariance matrix in, is in here and then we add that uh, to the priors and then we have this additional constant term uh, that's written there now in the scikit-learn docs we can use uh, regularization parameters for this uh, for when we implement this so if we set it to zero there's no uh, regularization so no shrinkage so zero and if it's set to one then it's complete shrinkage so that would start to Underfit. For quadratic discriminant analysis, uh, again, this was the equation that we have seen previously. Um, so here again, the posterior is uh, given here, and now in this case, we have the log, uh, we have the likelihood and the prior, and then these are. This is the final equation for that and the difference is here we have this uh, term sigma uh, one half minus one half log sigma k uh, which we did not have in the linear discriminant analysis 
and uh, when we implement this the only solver that is available for qda is the svd uh, solver whereas for lda we have a couple more options now when do we use lda versus qda so when linear versus quadratic discriminant analysis if your boundary line if you are if you need if the data needs to be separated by a linear decision boundary uh, then lda would be a choice if however the decision boundary cannot be linear then uh, quadratic discriminant analysis should work in those cases uh, additionally uh, with linear discriminant analysis there is a function called uh, attribute called transform that function called transform that we can use uh, with linear discriminant analysis to reduce the dimensionality uh, that is to reduce the number of features in the data set and then those uh, uh, reduced data set can then be used for training a model and here is uh, just the code for LDA and QDA where we can see that in QDA the regularization can be done by setting values for the reg underscore param uh, option whereas in linear discriminant analysis there is a shrink shrinkage uh, option that can be set now for code snippet uh, at this time uh, so far we have been importing linear underscore models now that's we are done with that and here we'll now for this video we have a new library uh, so sklearn dot discriminant underscore analysis and we can import linear discriminant analysis as well as quadratic discriminant analysis and this stays the same you have the x train y train train uh, x test and finally we uh, initialize the uh, variable clf using this method and then fit it on x train y train and then predict using the x test now let's get into jupyter notebook and see how we can implement these I have uh, imported a couple of libraries numpy, matplotlib, datasets, and the new libraries are these two. And additionally, these for working, splitting the data, and looking at the matrix. So this got imported twice. And these are the versions that I'm using. Now for data, we'll keep it simple. Uh, I'll use the iris dataset so that we can focus on the uh how the method works so for that let's import the get that uh, data is equal to data sets dot load underscore iris and uh, you probably already know this so we can look at what the data is so by typing descr and here we can see that there are uh, four features which are these and then there is one class which is this one sorry three classes for this is the column for that and with that we can split the data set so x underscore train x underscore test y underscore train y underscore test is equal to train underscore test underscore split data dot data data dot target and this with this we can also print the x train and y train shapes because after we reduce the dimensionality we'll notice that the shapes uh, would be different so x underscore train dot shape and then we can also have the y underscore underscore train dot shape and y underscore train dot shape and let me copy this so we can also get the shapes for the test data set so simply go ahead and replace this uh, and type in test so let me copy that and paste it here here and here so we have four features and we have about 112 columns sorry 112 rows now we are ready to perform the lda uh, linear discriminant analysis and quadratic discriminant 
statistical analysis so for this we'll create the variable clf is equal to linear discriminant analysis we'll use the default settings and clf dot fit x underscore train y underscore train underscore train and then we can use that to predict so y underscore predict pred is equal to uh, clf dot clf dot predict y underscore test sorry x underscore test and once we have the predictions we can then go ahead and uh, get the matrix so let's look at the accuracy score so uh, matrix dot uh, accuracy underscore score and this would depend on the x y test and y pred now we can print that out so accuracy and in addition we can also get the confusion matrix so matrix dot confusion underscore matrix y underscore test y underscore spread and again we can print that so this will be the confusion matrix and it's printed on a new row that is cm so we get 100 percent accuracy uh just because this is a small data set uh if we apply this on a larger data set um, uh, the value may not be one and because here we can see in the confusion matrix that all the off diagonal elements are zero uh, which means that all the uh, samples were classified correctly now let's look at qda so what i'll do is copy and keep everything the same except change this to quadratic so quadratic discriminant analysis and when we run this again we get 100 percent accuracy which is kind of expected because quadratic for such a small data set uh would uh this both both of these could be overfitting as well now finally let's look at dimensionality reduction and for this we know that there are four columns of features so four features and we'll see what it gets reduced to so let's call this transform data trans clf dot transform and what we need to transform is the very first data so this was the data that we had data dot data so what we can do is look at the shape after it is transformed so transform dot shape so let me go ahead and write the name transformed data and here we can uh, write the shape trans dot shape so that that we get the shape for the transform data and we can run this uh, okay uh, because quadratic does not have this and what i'll do is run the cell above so now we have the clf for linear discriminant analysis and so let me type that here this is using linear linear discriminant analysis so we now have a transform data set with only two features we started out with four features we just have to we could plot this so let's uh plot it uh plt dot scatter and here we have transformed trans and then all the rows in the column zero and then ns and here we have all the rows and in column one so when we run this so as we can see there are two separate clear clusters and a straight line would be the best kind of decision boundary we don't need any quadratic to separate these out so well, let's go ahead and try to run the same linear discriminant analysis on this transformed data set and see how that goes
so for that we also need to uh, get the train and test set again so i'll write that here the data in this case is going to be transformed data set so i'll just use trans and then for the actual fit i'll copy this code from the above and paste it here so or maybe paste it in this cell itself and when we run this uh, as you can see we have 112 rows but the number of columns are reduced we just have two columns uh, here and the accuracy stays the same uh, one and this is the confusion matrix which now has different numbers but the off diagonal elements are still zero in this case so that was it for this video i hope in this video you were able to uh, connect uh, the information that we discussed in the past four videos on base decision theory and kind of understand how the equations the intuition behind the equations that we saw in this video and then finally how to implement this in python uh, on a very small iris data set if you get a chance you could try while uh, applying this model to a much larger data set i'm also currently working on uh, creating some projects on the linear models that we have learned so far so stay tuned for that and please like share and subscribe i hope to see you all in the next video thank you